Well, this is the video that uh, a lot of you have been asking for. And uh, if you haven't and you just happen to stumble across it, uh, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about why I sold all of my favorite rods, why I no longer have nor use any favorite rods. Uh, we're gonna be talking about things that are uncomfortable to talk about in the YouTube fishing industry, which is you know money and the business aspect behind uh, a lot of decisions made behind the camera. Uh, to include all of your favorite creators, uh, whether that be, uh, I don't know, any of the Googans or Alex Rudd or Lojo or Noah kicking their bass or um, Norm, anybody, anybody for that matter. Uh, once you build a, a business and you establish a, a good base and, and like all of us, all of us guys that I just mentioned, uh, we're all either S Corps or LLCs. So it's Fishing with Yak Pack LLC. Uh, and then you got Alex Redfish and LLC, uh, Ryan is fishing S Corp, all that good stuff. So uh, we're going to be talking about that today. So if you don't want to see that, I'm going to link a video that's going to be popping up right here. It is my latest fishing adventure. Uh, I actually put the uh, Jackal Gantrail swim bait uh, to use and caught a pretty good fish. Uh, I make a, a little series called the Swimbait Showdown. So if you're new here, like I said, and, and you'd rather watch me fish than talk about uh, uh, some very kind of hot and spicy topics, then you can click on that video and watch me fish instead of talk about this. But with that being said, let's uh, let's go ahead and backtrack a little bit. Let's let's backtrack to the the beginning of me using favorite rods. Now I have been using favorite for over three years. Um, I was actually using favorite before uh, the the Lunkers rod was the the Lunkers TV Defender was the first. Uh, I guess you'll call it Guggen uh, brand rod from Favorite, and I had been using them since before that. Or uh, right, right after they released the Lunkers rod, right after Rob released the Lunkers rod, uh, I was I was on the website literally looking at the uh, Defender. And a disclaimer: before we move any further, I don't have anything personal against any anybody over at Favorite. It's not that. It's not that at all. Uh, and I do like their rods. I I, I think they're great rods. Uh, especially for, uh, you know, the, the lower tier ones, what they cost. You know, a, a balance is $99 and the absolute is $89. Those are great rods. You've seen them in literally hundreds of my videos, especially this year. Uh, but anyways, that's neither here nor there. Moving right along. Like I said, I've been using favorite rods for well over three years and some change. Uh, I've had every favorite rod that, that is known to man, every, every one of them except the, uh, the Emperor and the Rush. Uh, and I never did get my hands on those. So, a lot of you guys may have watched Weston's video, and you may have watched him talk about why he left uh, and the, the way that he went about getting rods and stuff like that. My scenario is a little bit different. The only rods that I was ever given from Favorite was a $89 Absolute rod. It was a 7.3 Extra Heavy. And then I also got the Atlanta Braves rod, which was a $100 rod. I think it was $129, but it was uh, marked down on sale uh, for 100 for the... Uh, the, I think it was the World Series or something like, maybe the playoffs or something like that. That was the only thing I ever got from Favorite for free. Those two rods, okay? So roughly 190 bucks worth of uh, worth of rods for free. Everything else that you ever saw me fishing with with Favorite stuff, like all those rods, uh, I bought all those, okay? And uh, I wish I, I'm not at my house as you can see right now, but uh, I wish I was able to uh, show you guys the receipt in hand. Like I, I've got it at my house still. I bought all those rods. Uh, as a matter of fact, when the Guggens did the meetup, a lot of you may remember this, when the Guggen squad did the meetup in South Carolina, in uh, I think it was Fort Mills, South Carolina, that Cabela's there, when they flew in on the helicopter and all that good stuff, when they did that, I went and bought like two of every rod um, and an extra of a couple because my friend that I bought some rods for, he was deployed. But anyways, I had spent my money buying those rods instead of uh, them being given to me. Um, so let's... Let, now that we've kind of got a base of the whole favorite rods thing and that I don't have anything against them, I do love their rods. I think they're great. Uh, and now, now let's move into like the business side of it. So I had approached Rob. I text Rob and at that time I felt that I was ready to move forward with some sort of partnership. I hate the word sponsor. I can't stand that word. I hate it. Uh, but partnerships, okay? You build partnerships. You build a trust and a bond with a company that you're going to work with like KVD did with Quantum and now Lose. Uh, Gerald Swindle's now with Lose. Uh, these things they happen all the time. But you want to build relationships with these people. You don't want to just you don't want to just do things for money. That's not that's not right. And in my eyes, that's never been right. That's just it doesn't 
people can see through the bullshit. Straight up. People can see through the bullshit. If you're pushing something just because you know you're going to get some money out of it, I can see straight through that shit, and I know you can too. So I myself, uh, when I make a, a partnered video or a sponsored video, I hate that word, but when I do that, I just know in, in my heart and soul, the only way that I'm going to do that is if I truly believe in the product. But anyways, I digress. Uh, I'm getting sidetracked. Uh, I text Rob. I said, hey, uh, does Favorite have anything open for a smaller creator? At the time, I think I had around 20,000 subs. And uh, I had known Rob for a while now. Uh, we know each other pretty well. We're not like best buddies. We're not like best friends. But we know each other pretty good. And uh, especially me being in the Army and him having the, the military background as well. But I text him and I asked him uh, if Favorite had anything open. And he said, uh, I'll help you out. I, you know, I, we can make something work for you or whatever. So I got in touch with a guy that ran all the, uh, the partnership deals and all that good stuff. And, um, he said, well, let's do this first. Let's start off by sending you a rod and make a couple videos out of it. See if you can sell. And then we'll go from there. Uh, so I did that. And the very first, they gave me a code. Uh, and I think the code may still be active. It's, uh, yak pack one five yak pack 15, all caps. And uh, it may be gone soon, uh, just like Weston said in his video. Mine may be gone soon, too. Uh, but anyways, they gave me that code. And the day that I got that code, I sold quite a few rods. Especially to, I know this for fact, for to be a fact, because uh, the guys that I work with uh, in the Army at one of the recruiting stations, they um, they bought like six apiece that day. And, you know, that's, that's 12 right there. And, you know, what is an average $100 rod? times 12 and then whoever else you know I posted it all over my Instagram all over my YouTube channel so I don't think I sold near as much as Weston did but I was uh probably not far off Weston sold I uh, I don't want to speak for Weston I don't want to speak for Weston matter of fact watch his video if you want to know how much he sold and this this will this whole thing will make a lot more sense to you um so I did that anyways I got that rod made a whole bunch of videos with it pushed a whole bunch of content out through Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff. And uh, I genuinely love the rod. I actually just broke the rod. So it was sad to see it go because it was my favorite, favorite rod. But nonetheless, um, fast forward a little bit. And here I had been asking back and forth, back and forth with that guy specifically if uh, if there was a way that I could get, you know, a couple rods, a couple more rods. Because up until this point, like I said, uh, I had paid for all of my favorite rods, and there were some other rods that I wanted. So, I don't know, for example, the Rush and the Emperor, I'd always wanted to try those out. I already had two Summit rods, so I didn't need any of the super, super high ends. Uh, I wanted some more actions and powers, some different, uh, like, rod line series that they have, the Rush, the Emperor, and, and stuff like that. But uh, I asked and asked and asked, and, and I know for a fact that at that point, I had sold my worth in those rods. I had proved my worth in those rods. But I wasn't going to act like a spoiled rich kid because I'm by far not that at all. After asking for them and they kind of, you know, was like, ah, that's a little steep. That's that's a little much. And, you know, it was upsetting at first. And, and then, But I kind of just blew it off. I was like, well, you know, I've already got eight other favorite rods. You know, I don't, I, I don't need any more, whatever. I'll just keep using what I've got. And then fast forward to this past summer. So I ended up uh, getting that Braves rod uh, because I kind of pushed really, really hard for that because, I'm, I mean, I'm from Georgia originally. Uh, I'm in the Army now, but, you know, I've lived all over. But uh, I'm from Georgia, like I said, so I'm automatically – I love the Braves. Uh, it was the playoffs, I think it was. It, it was the perfect time to be promoting the Atlanta Braves rod uh, or the MLB series, like the line that they have, that favorite has. So I was like, please, please – I'm almost to the point of begging. Please let me get a rod. Uh, you know, it's only going to cost you not even a hundred. The rod costs a hundred dollars. Uh, it does not cost a hundred dollars to make that rod. It doesn't cost a hundred dollars to make any rod realistically. Uh, so, you know, you got to take into account the markup value, but I basically begged and pleaded for that rod and I finally got it and I pushed the crap out of it and I sold quite a bit of them. So I guess the point that I'm trying to get at is, uh, this year, 2019, when I started working with favorite, uh, and there was, it was never anything set in stone. There was never any contract sign. There was never any piece of paper. I never got any dime off of that little code that everybody was using. I never got any commission. I never got a monthly payment. Um, nothing of that, nothing of that. It was just, it was literally just the discount code that all of you guys could use all my Instagram 
uh, followers could use, Twitter, Facebook, whoever. Whoever I wanted to promote that to, if they wanted to buy it, that's, that's what it was. Uh, but I never made any money off of that. Now, this is where it gets tricky. This is where it gets into the business aspect and the business side of things. Now, there's a lot of behind-the-scenes business stuff that goes down that we don't really, as uh, YouTube fishermen, we don't really like to show you guys because we feel like you guys really don't want to see it. Now, if you guys do kind of want to see that side of things, just let me know and I'll, I'll figure something out to, to make that happen. But it's just, you know, if you're older, if you're, I'm 30 years old, if you're my age and, and you're watching, I mean, you know, business is, I mean, nobody wants to watch business, I guess. I mean, maybe, maybe you do. Maybe that's your thing. The business side of things. Think about it this way, guys. If you have a little deal with Dasani, Dasani's going to send you a free case of water, one case of water every week, right? This is not a plug for Dasani, by the way. Uh, if, if Dasani sends you a case of water per week and you are promoting it to your friends, your family, your, your, your social media audience that you have worked your ass off to build for the past three and a half years, um, you, you, you've built this business from the ground up, from zero all the way up to where it is now, and you're selling a lot of Dasani, right? Let's say, I don't know, let's say you're selling... Seven or eight thousand dollars a month in Dasani, but all you're getting in return is a free case of water. Well, that's that eventually that's gonna kind of catch up when you when you kind of use it as a learning curve. Like, okay, let's let's just roughly estimate that I'm selling seven or eight thousand dollars a uh, a month in uh, Dasani water, and <laughs> you're not getting anything in return. That's, like I said, where it starts to get tricky. That's where you're like, okay, wait a minute. You know, I let's say it cost, I don't know, one bottle of Dasani could be $1.25. And let's say it costs 17 cents to make this bottle of Dasani. And then, you know, you mark it up, mark up value, $1.25. Uh, you should, you should be, uh, I get, no, nah, I don't want to say entitled. I don't like that word either. I don't like it. I don't feel entitled to anything. You should be at a point where Dasani is reaching out to you saying, Hey, you know, you're, you're selling quite a bit. You're doing pretty dang good. Uh, let's see if we can get you paid a little bit, you know, get you some commission off those Dasani's that you're selling, or let's see if we can put you on a, a, a set monthly basis, uh, because we know you're basically going to be around this, this number. You're going to sell around, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 Dasani's uh, cases this month. So let's go ahead and put you on this little uh, this little budget, this little, we're going to give you this much money per month because we know you're going to sell this much Dasani. So I guess what it all boils down to on the business side of things is you live and you learn. And especially in business, I don't, I have any degree in business. I also don't feel like you have to have a degree in business to understand business. I think you just need to do it. And that has led me to be a, a not a genius but a pretty intellectual businessman uh, when it comes to stuff like that. But anyways, like I said, I'm not, this is not me being salty. This is not me having anything at all whatsoever against favorite rods. I don't, I still love their rods. I just, I'm not going to use them. But anyways, moving on, uh, I'm, I don't have anything against favorite. Like I said, I, there, literally nothing personal at all against favorite. I'm just not going to use that. And I, I wanted to move on. There's something bigger in the works right now. Uh, that I want to be a part of, and I've kind of opened myself up to, to be able to do so. There's going to be a little, like, test phase, I guess, if you will, that I'll be, uh, fortunately, that I've heard that I'll be a part of. At least I hope. Because I firmly and, and strongly, with all of my heart and my soul, I only want to, uh, and I only will ever, I only, let me just clear, up, clear this up right now, I only will ever push something that I believe is worth your hard-earned money okay it's not like you guys are watching that you don't have seven figure eight figure jobs like that's you if you're making a million plus dollars a year you're probably not watching my fishing videos on youtube i i highly doubt that is the case so the the average person that watches my videos is just like me i don't make great money i'm in the army i've been in the army for 11 years so i make okay money but it's not like I can't go fork out $300 for a rod or even $200 for a rod uh, at any given moment. So if I'm going to tell you guys I firmly, like strongly, strongly believe in something, uh, 
that's coming from my heart. That's that's just strictly coming from my heart. So matter of fact, I wanna show you guys something. A lot of you guys have been asking recently about why I have my rod tape taped up and I don't. Well, I guess I technically do. This is a lose rod, right? This is a lose rod. And I had it taped. I still have some tape on it right here. I had it taped because I wanted to paint it. There was nothing, there was nothing, there was not, not like me trying to hide the logos or nothing crazy like that. Everybody knew it was a lose TP1. Literally everybody was like, hey, why do you got your TP1 taped up? Uh, it's nothing, I just, I wanted to paint it. I wanted to spray paint it. And then I heard spray painting your rod's probably not the best idea. So I began uh, taking the tape off of it and was like, oh, okay, yeah, probably, probably not a good idea. But that's, that's the little story behind the lose rod. But anyways, I know I watched Weston's video and he mentioned that he kind of wanted to uh, go along with the Guggen Squad rather than favorite rods, which I can stand behind that. Weston is a really, really, really good friend of mine. Me and Weston talk all the time. I actually just talked to Weston uh, earlier this morning, and he's an awesome dude. I love that dude to death, and one of the hardest working, uh, I guess, social media fishermen uh, that any of you will ever meet. I mean, this guy, it's like all of us work hard, but there's there's a threshold, and he just takes it above me. I don't even think that dude sleeps. I really don't even think Weston sleeps. Uh, but he's a really, really awesome dude. Love him to death. Uh, anyways, like I was saying, he mentioned in his video he would rather follow along with what the Guggens are doing rather than favorite rods. Uh, me, I'm definitely not against that by any means. I don't want to be like in the Guggen squad myself. Not saying I would ever have the chance to be in the Guggen squad. Don't, don't mistake that. Uh, but it, I, I do know those guys, and I do like all of them. They're really good guys. They catch a lot of flack. A lot of people don't like them. A lot of people don't like Guggen baits, which that blows my mind too because Guggen baits is good. Like I don't, I don't understand. I mean, they, Guggen baits are great. So is Strike King. So is Six Sense. All these baits are great. Uh, but you, I mean, people just knock them because they're Guggen baits. Uh, but anyways, anyways, I, I keep getting digressed, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't want to necessarily be in the Guggen squad, but I would like to be able to link up with those guys. For example, Alex hit me up not long ago. AP hit me up not long ago and asked if I could come to Texas to be a part of their Guggen Week, which is where they film like 30 episodes in, uh, or something like that in like seven days. And unfortunately, I was not able to be a part of that because it was a last minute thing. And in the army, we can't just jump up and go somewhere like that last minute. We have to basically like you when you ask for at your job, when you ask for vacation time, you can't just do it the day before. And it just so happened he he texted me on a, a Sunday night and he wanted me out there Monday morning. And I was like, oh, I can't, man. Maybe next time. But anyways, my reason more specifically would be not necessarily to, you know, the Guggen's left favorite. And why do they leave favorite? Nobody really knows. You can kind of, if you're, if you really start thinking about it, you can kind of, uh, you can kind of see a trend, and you could probably put two and two together to figure it out. This is just speculating. Also, this is not me. Like I don't, like John never texts me or Rob never texts me and be like, hey man, we left favorite because of this. Like that doesn't. They keep all that very, very hush hush uh, between themselves because that's that's I don't care. That's none of my business. Um, my reason more specifically is I want to be centric more centric i guess to one company there's some things in the works right now everybody knows i work with mystery tackle box and carl's bait and tackle uh, which are like lower end company not lower end but like lower tier to catchco like catchco is the top catchco is the top and like mystery tackle box and carl's are like i guess not parent not what would that be parent sibling sibling companies i don't know i don't know how you would say that but that's what they are it's catchco mtb and then carl's bait and tackle uh, well, there's something that works there. I want to be more centric to using uh, one thing if I like using it once I start using it. It's like I said, that's kind of all I'm going to give you guys. It's almost exactly like Kevin Van Dam. KVD. Oh, KVD. Not Carl. Kevin. But uh, KVD left Quantum after 20-something years, right? 20-something years? He was already working with Strike King. It only made sense as the whole lose and Strike King became one uh, that Kevin make that move over there. Uh, that was a again a business move on him, and a business move on Luz. That it, it just makes sense. So you see this a lot. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, Gerald Swindle, G Man. He just he just went to lose. So you've got all these either pro fishermen or uh, YouTube fishing influencers that make these changes, and it's it's all about finding a home, right? It's not about the money. It's really not. It's not about the money. I'm going to tell you guys right now. If I was doing YouTube right now for the money, <laughs> I'd be a broke ass is what I would be. 
you don't make near as much money as you think you do on YouTube uh, until you get up to that Guggen Squad guy level. Like when you're up there, you're getting all those views, that's when the money starts coming in. But for now, it's a, it's a building process. There's stepping stones. You're, you're basically laying the foundation and then you start building the house. But you see those pro fishermen do that. And it's not like, and those social media uh, fishing influencers, you see us do stuff like that. We make our moves, our smart moves, and people are like, oh, well, you're only leaving favorite because of this, or um, whatever reason, whatever reason you can think of. And those moves that are being made are, you know, there's no real, like, trash company. There's Unless you're, like, one of these, like, straight out of China, like, $7 Amazon bait caster reels, like, yeah, probably, probably trash. But uh, like Luz, uh, Shimano, you know, Favorite's not trash. I'm, I will never bash Favorite because they're they're not trash. Abu Garcia, all these other companies that you can think of, they're not trash. They're it's it's there's no one of the comments I hate getting is, oh, uh, you only use Favorite rods because the Guggen uses them, and Favorite rods suck, and all this and that. Well, in Favorite's defense, in Favorite's defense, even though I don't use their stuff anymore, and I will not use their stuff anymore, and in, in their defense, their rods are not trash, and you can't sit here and tell me that their rods are trash when I don't know. I'm sure you guys may take care of your stuff a little better than I do, but I literally beat the shit out of my stuff. I've, I put 45,000 miles on my truck in the past, um, 18 months from the majority of like going around fishing, like all over the United States and stuff like that. And I beat the hell out of my gear and it was all favorite rods and they all stood up. So they're, by no means trash, by no means trash. But it is just time for me to, to move on to something else. Um, so in the gist of things, like boil it all down, um, I and it, personally, deep down inside me, I felt that it was, uh, I had worked hard enough throughout 20, uh, uh, 16, 17, 18, and this year, uh, promoting favorite rods. And then I actually finally got in touch with somebody. They sent me those two rods. Uh, that was the only thing I ever got for free from Favorite. I felt at the later stages of this of this year, uh, probably about the half halfway mark in the year, I felt that it was time for me to start making a little money off of that. And we, um, myself and Favorite, we we didn't really see eye to eye, so I decided to sell my Favorite rods so I could buy new rods and try out new brands uh, until something else comes comes down the pipe until something else happens uh, but until then most likely guys i don't keep it complicated anymore used to i'm gonna pick this up real quick used to i would have about 20 different rods in my truck at all times but now i'm not even playing with you guys i keep a 7.3 heavy uh fast action and i keep my spinning rod and i have learned quite quickly in uh, i live in south florida now down in like palm beach and towards you know close to miami I've learned really quick, you don't need all that stuff. Like, I, I do just fine with a, look at this, I'm fishing a Texas rig right now on a 7.3 Heavy. Fast action. I mean, you don't have to, don't, just keep it simple, guys. Save your money, save your money, spend your money on something else, invest your money into something. If you're even thinking about starting a YouTube channel, save it up for a GoPro, save it up for a camera, uh, save it up for the new iPhone. A lot of times, I'll make my videos off the new iPhone. I don't even use my big camera anymore. Anyways, to close this all out, I wanted to be honest and upfront with you guys and just know that I will always, always be honest and upfront with you guys. I will never blow smoke up your butt. I will, I will never push a product on my channel, my Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff. I will never push a product that I do not believe in ever, ever, ever. Uh, and I do not want to do that because when you start doing that is when you really lose you guys, your guys' trust. And you guys are the ones that are making this dream slowly but surely become a reality. All I want to be able to do is I want to make people laugh. I always want to make people laugh. I always want to make people cheer up. I, I, want, I want people to be uh, happy. I want to be able to teach you what I know uh, about fishing. And I also want to be able to learn from you guys. I think this is so awesome that every time I make a video, every single time somebody's in the comments like, Hey, TJ, you, you, you know, could have done this. Or if you, if you tried that instead of that, that may have worked. And I'm like, ah, why didn't I think of that? That's good. That's why I love having you guys around uh, in the comment section of these videos. And then on Instagram down in the comments as well. I love, love, love talking to you guys. Um, there's no other fishing YouTuber, maybe Weston, maybe Weston. Uh, but there's no other fishing YouTuber besides him that uh, that spends as much time uh, getting back to you guys because Weston and I, 
genuinely like from our hearts care about you guys. You guys are making this all possible for us and we want to show our, our, our gratitude and our thanks to you literally as much as we can. But check it out guys, if you've made it this far in this video, uh, I wanna do something special for you because I think, I don't even know, we're probably close to 20 minutes, uh, maybe over, maybe a little bit less, I'm not sure. But if you have made it this far in the video, uh, comment your thoughts down in the comment section and I will enter you in a chance to win a uh, $25 uh, AFCO gift card. Actually, I'm gonna talk to my guy over there and I'm gonna see if we can make it a $50 gift card for AFCO. Uh, but all you have to do, just hit the thumbs up on the video because that'll help me out. So like the video and leave a comment of your whole thoughts on the, the whole favorite rods thing. And, and if I didn't answer something in this video, I'll, I'll answer it for you guys down in the comments more specifically. Uh, I guess in detail, but I'm going to try to get you guys a uh, $50 AFCO gift card. So let me know. I'll uh, announce the winner here in, I don't know, probably probably two weeks or something like that. I'll give this video a little bit of time to build up. But anyways, thanks for hearing me out, guys. Thanks for, thanks for watching. Uh, 2019. Oh, my goodness. What an awesome year, guys. I got a really awesome end of the year video coming out for you guys. So please, please, please don't miss that one. I'm telling you. I worked so hard on this video because I wanted to make it I wanted to make it as good as I could for you guys. But anyways, I love all y'all. I hope you all had a, a fantastic 2019 and I hope you have an even better 2020. Uh, if there's anything that I can do for you guys, hit me in the comments, hit me in the Instagram DMs, Twitter DMs, I don't care. Let me know and I'll do everything I can to help you out. Thank you again for watching. I love y'all. We'll catch y'all next time.